this was a nefarious act. This was an evil act. But if anything happened to me, he's responsible for it. I'm too smart, mama. And on November 3rd, the Smith County Sheriff uh, said in a Facebook post that there was no reason to believe foul play was involved. I think that's weird. Hi guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. So I hope you guys are having a great day. So for today's case, this case really had me on an emotional roller coaster. Like I was angry, I was sad, confused, because the details were so heavy and just really disturbing for the most part. And I really feel for this family. Rasheem Carter was a 25 year old from Mississippi who went missing October 2022 after he shared with his mom he was being targeted by white men from his job. He begged police to help him but they refused. He was later found dead in the woods with his head decapitated and his case still remains unsolved with no arrest. This is the case of Rashim Carter. Black people are in a state of an emergency. We are in a state of emergency. Before we jump into today's case, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Every Plate. Everyone knows when you're a mom, sometimes it can get really busy in the house. And most of the time, I need great quality flavorful food to cook within 30 minutes or less. And with Every Plate, we got ourselves a win. Every Plate offers fresh and delicious meal kits that are actually affordable, so you could keep some money in your pockets every month. Every Plate is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping, so you can count on a great value week after week. Plus, only pay for what you need with pre-portioned ingredients. So you can customize every plate meals to your liking with different proteins and veggie options and also sides to your dishes each week, which I love personally. So I'm gonna cook tonight the caramelized onion burger with Dijon aioli and potato wedges. And it comes with a recipe card that you can follow. So we have the potatoes, yellow onions, potato buns, ground beef, and Dijon mustard. And I also added my own seasoning just to add some more flavor to get my beef, you know, all tasty. And I know we're all obsessed with, you know, getting takeout some nights, especially when you don't feel like cooking, but every plate meals are 58% cheaper than your average fast casual meal. So put the money you, ha you know, you have towards making some real tasty recipes this spring. I really enjoyed cooking this meal because it was so quick. So I wasn't stressed out with trying to balance making dinner, making bottles, or getting my toddler down for bed at a reasonable time. And when it was time to actually sit down and enjoy my dinner, the food was actually pretty good and it only took me 30 minutes. Every plate provides plenty of delicious varieties, so you'll never get stuck cooking the same meals with 25 tasty and affordable recipes to choose from each week. So get started with every plate for just $1.49 per meal. Use code LEO149 at everyplate.com. Thank you so much, every plate, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump into today's case. Rashim was born on October 28, 1996, from Fayette, Mississippi. His parents, Tiffany Carter and Robert Fry, describe Rashim as very outgoing, loving, hardworking, and also a big sports fan. He was a star wide receiver on his football team and the captain of his baseball team at Jefferson County High School. When he graduated, he went to attend Hines Community College and graduated in 2016 with a degree in welding and cutting technology. So in 2019, he opened a seafood business called Cali's Express, which was named for his daughter. Rashim really had his head on straight and he had to because not only was he working hard for himself but also his seven-year-old daughter who he loved very deeply. Now around September 2022, Rashim started a new lumber contracting job in Taylorsville, Mississippi. 
His mother Tiffany shared that for Rashim, the job was a way to save money to try to get his seafood restaurant back up and running after it was shuttered during the COVID-19 pandemic when food costs went super high. So Rashim traveled more than two hours east to Taylorsville to work this contract job. He stayed at a Super 8 motel in the city of Laurel, which was about 30 minutes away from Taylorsville. On October 2nd, 2022, Rashim went missing. Now, prior to his disappearance, he called and sent his mother a text that expressed he feared for his life. During this contract job, Rashim ran into some problems with a few people at work, including a co-worker that told him he could no longer ride with him to and from work. He also texted his mother and told her, quote, me and the owner of this company are not seeing eye to eye, mama. If anything happens to me, he's responsible for it. It has to be investigated. Do you want to read it, Tiffany? I read it. You have to say the name. Okay. And what? Uh, this was on um, October the 1st. My son texts me. This was after uh, him and I had gotten off the phone. He said, me and the owner of this company, not seeing eye to eye, mama. His name, I, which I can't say at this time, but if anything happened to me, he's responsible for it. I'm too smart, mama. He got these guys wanting to kill me. So not only was Rashim having issues with a coworker, you know, not wanting to give him a ride to and from work anymore, I don't even know the root of that issue, like why the co-worker couldn't drop him to work and pick him up anymore, like what happened. But he was also having a real problem with his boss to the point where he felt like he was in real serious danger. Like he felt like someone wanted to really harm him. On October 1st, 2022, while trying to find a ride back home to Laurel, Rashim contacted his mom. He told her that he was being chased by men in three pickup trucks who were yelling racial slurs at him and pretty much harassing him. So his mom told him right away that he needed to go to the police station. So of course he listened and he went to the police station down in Taylorsville to report that he feared for his life and that he was being followed by a group of white men and they were threatening him. Rashim also didn't have a car at the time and since his co-worker didn't want to bring him home he asked the officers if you know they can give him a ride back to Laurel because he was afraid and he felt like you know this would be you know this would pretty much be security for him he would feel content that if they brought me back home I will make it there okay but they told him that they couldn't bring him back to the motel because it was out of their jurisdiction and that they weren't a taxi service. Even after Rashim literally told them he was being followed, they refused. Now the drive from Taylorsville to Laurel was only 30 minutes. So I believe one officer in that station could have easily taken Rashim to his motel and just offer support and safety. But they chose not to. Now, police said otherwise. In an exclusive interview with the Vicksburg Daily News, Smith County Chef Joel Houston responded by saying, Rashim Carter did not indicate he was in any danger when he came to the police department. To them, he never seemed to be in any distress or anything, and he never mentioned anything about being in immediate danger. They offered him a phone call and he said he had a phone and they even offered him a charger but the charger that was available didn't fit his phone and he was just trying to find a ride back to Laurel when he came in contact with them. So after I read that statement I honestly don't know if I believe that because Rashim walked in there for a valid reason. You know he saw some men in a pickup truck that was following him so he felt like his life was in danger. He was scared and needed help. He didn't just walk in there just to find a ride home. So I honestly didn't like the fact that he pretty much made it seem that he just came in there you know for a taxi service. Like no he was asking hey can you at least bring me all home because at this point I don't feel safe. 
he's in a town where he doesn't he doesn't know anyone he's there for a job contract and on top of it Rasheen mom did share that she was on the phone with Rasheen the whole time he was there at the station so she could confirm that she heard an officer tell him no because Laurel was out of their jurisdiction and she heard someone say he couldn't even stay at the station and that he had to leave. But on October 2nd, 2022, that Sunday morning, he went back to the police station to let them know his concerns and that he felt like he was in danger, but they still didn't help him. He was also in contact with his mom for a little that morning, but stopped texting her back after a while. So Aisha Green, a close family friend, told Rasheem that she was coming to pick him up and it was going to take a few hours, but she was coming right away. He shared his location with his mom to share with her and Aisha made it to Taylorsville. Aisha stated, quote, when I first got there, I went to the Chevron and I waited there for a little while. I went to the Piggly Wiggly and JR Food Mart and the Family Dollar Store and I went in and asked, have they seen him? Showed photos and everyone said no. She also drove to many other places, including Rashid's room at the Super 8 Motel in Laurel, but there was no sign of him. Taylorsville police tried to reassure Aisha and Tiffany that they would try and find Rashim after they filed a missing person report when they couldn't find Rashim anywhere. And I'm happy that they filed the missing persons report right away because obviously, I mean, at this point, if you can't find Rashim, it looks weird because just the day before he was complaining to his mother about, you know, being followed and being harassed by a group of men. And now he's nowhere to be found. So after several days of Rashim still missing, on October 7th, a large group of family and friends returned to Taylorsville to conduct a search themselves to find Rashim. They placed flyers all around the town and searched everywhere desperately looking for him. Weeks had gone by and there was no new leads on finding Rashim. So when Tiffany went back home, she received devastating news. No mother wants to ever hear. On November 1st, 2022, a Smith County Sheriff contacted Tiffany about a man captured by a deer camera located in the woods around 4.30 p.m. south of Taylorsville. Tiffany identified the man in the picture as her son. When she looked at the picture, she stated that she could see visible bruising on Rashim and that her baby boy seemed scared like he was being chased down. She also stated that he had a wood stick in his hand and it looked like her son was trying to protect himself. She knew after looking at that picture that Rashim was in danger fighting for his life. So the next day, November 2nd, 2022, the search crew would find the remains of Rashim Carter in a wooded area of Taylorsville about 21 miles away from where he was reportedly last seen. Now, when they found Rashim, his body was decapitated. An independent autopsy conducted by the Mississippi State Medical Examiner's Office found that Rashim's head was detached from his body and his vertebrae and spinal cord was found in a different area from his head. They have recently found remains that they believe are also Rashim's at another area of where he went missing. The family lawyer, Ben Crump, who represented families of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, spoke at a press conference regarding Rashim's Carter's death. This represents a young man who was killed. His head was severed from his body. His vertebrae, his spinal cord, was in another spot they discovered away from his severed head. They have recently found remains that they believe are also received Carter at another part of where 
he went missing. And what that tells us is that this was a nefarious act. This was an evil act. Somebody murdered Racine Carter. And we cannot let them get away with this. And so today, we are calling for the Department of Justice to open an investigation as to what happened to Rasheem Carter. Somebody seen what happened to Rasheem. And it doesn't make any sense at all because the text message that his mother got before he went missing is a part of the clue to solving this murder. And then he went missing. And then his remains were found with his head dismembered from his body, his spinal cord separated from his head, and his other body parts are still missing. Tiffany deserves answers. He also shared that Rashim's skull and his spinal cord were put in a box at the state crime lab and returned to his mother. And when I found that information out, I kind of felt like that was a bit off-putting. I don't know about you, but I just kind of felt like it was a bit insensitive and disrespectful because I feel like there were... I feel like they could have went about that another way, like another way for sure. Another key detail with this case is that a little after Rasheem's remains were found, someone used or attempted to use his credit card. Now Rasheem's wallet was found in his jeans and including the credit card in question. So they're still investigating more details um, regarding that as well. Rashim's loved ones immediately suspected foul play in his death when everything started and actually called for a federal investigation into the case because they believed he was the target of a lynch mob. Sheriff Joel Houston of the Smith County Sheriff's Office said, quote, the department is trying to look at every possibility but says there isn't any evidence of foul play at this time. Quote, there is nothing being covered up. There is nothing being swept under the rug. There's nothing to hide, he said. This case remains under investigation and state investigators and the FBI are involved. But authorities have so far not found evidence to corroborate the allegation that he was even being followed. I also do find it strange that there's this energy from the police that they care now and doing everything in their power to help the Carter's family. But you also have the town's chief of police doing provoking and questionable things that show otherwise. Two protests was held in Taylorsville back in December 2022 and their most recent one in February last month. Now during the most recent protests, they had multiple law enforcement agencies and out of support, a protester wrote, Rashim's life mattered on the street. After the protests, Gabe Horn, the town's chief of police, posted a picture on Facebook of a message written in chalk being power washed off, stating, quote, a little cleanup. So that right there, I thought was very provoking and almost a slap in the face. I wanted to also talk about Rashim's boss, Luke Clements, who he worked for and told his mom that he felt like if anything happened to him, to look into his boss. So Luke has come out with an interview recently and he shared that him and his family is now getting death threats from an internet mom. Luke, let me start uh, with what's happened to, to you and your family and why you decided to get everybody and immediately uh, go into hiding. You know, after the, uh, the national press conference, um, you know, all, all throughout the, the process of, of the uh, machine case and, and all, we 
you know, I've, I've continuously ever since he went missing have, have received calls and and always receiving things, you know, via the internet and, and social media. Um, but once the national press conference uh, hit the news, it just got relentless. Um, you know, we started getting death threats. Um, you know, it started being accusations made toward my wife and my kids. If I'm going to help you, we need to prove innocence, a difficult thing to do. So I asked him literally on the phone, get me your phone records. He did. Get me employment records. He did. Get me records showing where you were that next day, October 2nd. He was at work 622 in the morning, didn't leave until 844 at night in a secure facility. He wasn't there when whatever happened to Rashim happened to him. And then we ran him through a polygraph. Did you know anything about Rashim's passing? No. Did you harm him in any way? No. Did you have anything to do with it or any knowledge of it? No. The problem with it is that even if um, Miss Tiffany, Rashid's mom, didn't intend this horrible tidal wave of violence, it's there because in the internet, one little thing is taken as the truth and it can blow up and hurt people. And that's the concern we have right now. Understandably, there's no excuse for people jumping to conclusions and becoming law enforcement themselves and then going after um, a person, a person's wife, a person's children. Duvalier Malone, an author and activist from Fayette, shared that Mississippi's violent history against black people is the main reason why the Carter family and other local activists in the state are feeling very uneasy. Quote, Mississippi's justice system is still brutally not made for black or brown people. You cannot tell me if that was a white body gone missing. Mississippi Bureau of Investigations and the FBI wouldn't have aggressively been looking into this. It is amazing how Rashim is one of many stories that go unreported in Mississippi every day and that poor family is hurting as a result of it. Rashim Carter's cause of death still is undetermined. Police are very vocal that foul play wasn't involved and his case is still unsolved. And on November 3rd, the Smith County Sheriff uh, said in a Facebook post that there was no reason to believe foul play was involved. I think that's weird. That's just one day after his body's found without his head. So... Joseph Scott Morgan, who's a certified death investigator, I called him right away and I said, is it possible, you know, I'm trying to, you know, think about all the possibilities here. Is it possible that a month in the woods in Mississippi in October, is it possible that animal activity could have caused that sort of damage to a body? And he did say it is possible. Coyotes, wild dogs, wild hogs and domesticated dogs could actually do that, could remove a head from a body. But on Tuesday, the Smith County Sheriff, Joel Houston, who defended his earlier determination, said at the time, no evidence pointed to foul play, which I think is weird because, again, it was only one day, um, but that he's still waiting on search warrants and that murder has not been ruled out at this time. The attorney for Tiffany Carter, that's his mom, uh, Ben Crump, has said, this is a brutal hate crime and it needs to be investigated as such. First of all, Mrs. Carter, I'm, I'm so sorry that we are meeting under these circumstances and um, it's just such a, a painful uh, situation to be in. But facts seem to be fluid and, and it seems like when you spoke up, that seems to be when the sheriff softened his tone. Do I have the timing right on that? Yeah, the, you have the timing right on it. It just seems so odd to me. Your son communicated with you that he was being targeted. Can you sort of expand on that a little bit more and tell me what he told you before he died? Okay, before, okay, before he died, he actually, well, before anything took place, he actually told me that it was three white trucks full of white men trying to harm him, trying to kill him. And um, I told him to go to the police station and everything. He did everything that I, you know, asked him to do. They told him he couldn't stay there. Um, he didn't stay there. He texted me after he left the police department, and he said that, um, "Mom, if something, you know," he told me 
we're not seeing it eye to eye. My boss and I are not seeing it eye to eye, eye to eye. And then he put his boss name there and he put the company name there. And he told me uh, if something happened to him, his boss was, was responsible. And he said, Mama, I'm smart. He got these men trying to kill me. And um, he texted me that after he actually left the left the um, police department that particular night. And then um, later on, once they found his remains, um, once they found his remains, they told me um, when I went back there that um, I never, I didn't, when they, when they first seen it, I mean, when they first found it, I never got the opportunity to see it the very first day when they found his remains. So the next day, which was November the 3rd, they allowed me to go back there and they showed me where his remains were, you know, were found. But when I went back there, immediately the Holy Spirit told me it was foul play. And then I I told the sheriff, I said that, uh, he said, when I told him it was foul play, he said, no, uh, it's, 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 it's no foul play. That's what he told me. And he let, tried let to me convince ask, me. Um, let, let me ask your attorney, Ben Crump. Uh, ben, it, it seems odd that Rashim was found on November 2nd in that condition. And it wasn't even like a day before the no foul play was, you know, posted on Facebook. Is the concern with the amount of time, um, how quickly they determined that? Because it seems now that murder may still be on the table. Well, Ashley, they said no, no foul play so quickly. It made Tiffany Carter and her family believe that they were trying to sweep it under the rug. And it wasn't until our firm and a lot of other people uh, started saying, this doesn't add up. When you look at that text message and the fact that he was being chased, you have to investigate this. You cannot try to tell this brokenhearted mother that her son being found with his head decapitated was uh, natural because I believe, as Tiffany said, he said, oh, he must have got dehydrated and passed out. And animals uh, tore his body apart from one, the head, the spinal cord. I mean, it makes no sense whatsoever, Ms. Banfield. Well, I'm gonna, we're going to follow this case. Um, clearly, if there are still warrants due, then there's still information to come. And I hope you'll keep us... Um, posted and we certainly Ms. Carter will keep you in our prayers as well and, and I said it before I'll say it again I am so sorry we're meeting under these circumstances and I just wish you all the peace um, that your family is deserved thank you, thank you. and I also want to thank um, Cardi B I want to thank her and Benjamin Crump for shining so much light on my son case I really appreciate the love and um the support that they have given me throughout this time. Now, my own personal opinion, I believe that Rashim Carter was murdered. I feel like the FBI should really look into speaking with his co-workers and boss. I feel like the family should handle the police department accordingly for neglecting and ignoring Rashim when he pleaded for help and they did nothing. I believe that foul play was involved and there's a lot of darkness going on behind the scenes when it comes to Rashim's case that the public is very much unaware of. And the people in that small town of Taylorsville, Mississippi, knows something. Not to mention, if he was having problems at work already, I won't be surprised if some racism was going on too, or if he was being disrespected or mistreated, so he reacted to it. So we have to be very honest. This happened in Mississippi. Mississippi is known for the killing of Emmett Till, who was a 14-year-old African-American boy who was abducted, tortured, and lynched in 1955 after being accused of offending a white woman. So there's already a deep, deep root of racism that resides there that you just can't ignore. Here we are, 2023, 
some 70 years after the 50s. We thought we had advanced here in Mississippi. I've been a Mississippian for all 46 years of my life, and I've never heard of a crime this horrific in my life. I was not living during the time of Emmett Till. I heard about that and read about it in the history books, but I thought we had progressed in Mississippi. But we are living in the Jim Crow era 2.0, and there seems to be a surge of white supremacy. There's no reason that Rasheem Carter should have been killed. He was dutifully and gainfully employed, just trying to make a living for his young, young child, and ends up dead, chased by what we believe to be a white supremacists, a lynch mob. And so we're going to stand with Attorney Crump and stand with his family to fight for justice. We need the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice and the highest levels of government to come to our defense in Mississippi. Amen. Because it's wise for Carter's today. It could be my family tomorrow. It could be any black American in Mississippi. It could be any of us. There is a new surge of white supremacy, and none of us should feel safe until all of us feel safe. And so we will fight for justice until the end. It really saddens me that Rashim was in so much fear and most likely had so much anxiety before he died because he just knew he was in trouble. I feel for his parents, his family and friends and his young daughter because you don't ever want to lose someone like this. What happened to his body was just inhuman and I'm not going to take that an animal did this as even a possibility because when I see news outlets reporting that and the police reporting that I kind of felt angry because I feel like they often play in our faces like we're stupid even though the facts can be in plain sight so I just pray that the Carter family receive justice very soon because what happened to Rashim Carter this could have happened to your son, your brother, uncle, friend, cousin, dad. It could have been any any one of our loved ones in this situation. Rashim's Carter was laid to rest in his hometown of Fayette, Mississippi on February 25th, 2023. Rashim's family is still seeking answers about the circumstances that led to his suspicious death. So while this case is still ongoing and unsolved, let's pray for the Carter family for just peace and healing during this time. Father God, we all come together today and we just pray for the Carter family. We pray for Rashim's mom, his dad, his daughter, his family and friends, Father Lord God, during this time. I know it's a tough time right now because things are very much unclear. They don't know, you know, much details. But Father Lord God, what's ever in the dark will always come to light. I ask you, Father Lord God, to expose everything that needs to be exposed, Father Lord God. Whoever is guilty of this crime, Father Lord God, bring it to attention, Father Lord God. Anything that's trying to be covered up, Father Lord God, put your hands on this case and bring justice for the Carter's family. We pray for peace. We pray for healing, Father Lord God. Protect every subscriber that is watching, Lord God, when they're out at work, when they're traveling, Father Lord God, when they're just going to the gas station or the store, or grocery store, or going to school, Lord God. We cover every last subscriber, every watcher. We pray for the Carter's family for their protection, Father Lord God, during this time. We thank you, Father Lord God, for all that you're about to do with this case, everything that you're about to expose, everything that you're about to just put together and solve father lord god you know all things and i just pray for rest for the carter's family for peace and we thank you father god for all that you're about to do in jesus name we pray amen thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to share 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 so that we could receive justice for rashim carter police because this is this was very current this case just happened a few months ago so if we could definitely help out the carter family 
in any way with our platform guys share 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 let's bring awareness that's the whole point of this channel this community this is what we do so guys keep the carter family in your prayers and i will see you guys next time black people are in a state of an emergency we are in a state of emergency black folks in america and those who support us need to understand